Welcome to Clemson, South Carolina. We're getting a ticket to Tigers. Softball is becoming tougher and tougher by the year. For another season, season tickets are sold out here at McWhorter Stadium. And we are excited to get you to the third of the final game here, the ACC set between Virginia and Clemson with All-American Madison Shipman. I'm Alex Perlman. And even though Clemson right now, the number four team in the country, is going for the sweep, these have been two really competitive games in both pitchers duels. Yeah, we're not used to seeing pitchers duels this year. It seems to be all about the hitters. But when we talked to both of these coaches coming into this weekend, the first thing they mentioned about the opponent were the pitching staff. So we kind of had a feeling it was going to come down to the pitchers in the circle this weekend. And for Clemson, one of the best staffs across the country. And they're showing us exactly why this weekend. It was Millie Thompson that got the start in game one, of course, coming from the left side. She mixes her speeds a ton. She has so much confidence in that off-speed hit pitch. It has good downward bite to it. She mixes in that curveball, and she was fantastic in game one of the doubleheader. Ultimately, Clemson ended up winning that ball game. You fast forward to game two of the doubleheader. They brought in Valerie Cagle. She's going to bring the heat, throwing the ball 71, 72 miles per hour. And I thought she had really good command of her drop ball and her off-speed rise ball thrown in there. So mixing speeds, adding to that level of difficulty for a batter facing a pitcher like Valerie Cagle. It's one of the best one-two punches in the entire country. And Virginia has struggled this series. Five for 45 batting, just 111 against the Tigers. Tori Gilbert has been a real bright spot, though, with a hit in both games of the doubleheader yesterday. And once again, Clemson turning to their two-way star, Valerie Cagle, in the circle. You know, Alex, we were interested coming into today who we were going to see in the circle for Clemson because they have so many different options out there in the circle. But they decide to go to, with Cagle again. And quick ground ball over to Aliyah Logaleo for out number one. And that's what you're going to see a lot of when Cagle is in the circle. You're going to see a lot of ground balls, and it's because of that heavy drop that she throws down in the zone, coming in about 70 miles per hour. It's like going up there and trying to hit a bowling ball. That's what it feels like when you're facing a power pitcher like Cagle. Well, what a way for Tori Gilbert, who we just oh. mentioned. Two for five so far this series with a double and has scored the only run so far for Virginia. Game one, it was a 4-1 final in favor of the Tigers. Millie Thompson threw a complete game, giving up just one run. And then in game two, it is a rematch of what we're seeing in the circle. Cagle versus Molly Grube, who was fantastic. Only gave up one run. It was unearned. And we will see her in the bottom half of the first inning. Big cut and a miss at 72 miles an hour by Gilbert at the count one and two. Kegel, the two-time All-American, who, by the way, is also hitting 489 on the season, fourth in the country. When you look at the best players in Division I, Valerie Kegel is, if not at the top of the list, she is darn close to it. Just a complete all-around player. We see her over at first base defensively as well. So she's one of those players that can truly do it all every single time that she steps out onto the field. And it's so great to see her this season feeling healthy. I think that's made such a big difference for her coming into this year. She's playing free. She's having fun. And you're seeing the success and the results that she's been able to put up this season. Got Gilbert looking on the outside corner. And there is the first strikeout of the afternoon for Cagle. I like that Cagle started off this at bat with that rise ball and then just pounded the heavy drop ball, even throwing it a bit more up in the zone to get Tori Gilbert looking on that first strikeout. Abby Weaver now with nobody on and two away, the starting right fielder for the Cavaliers. Cuts through the off speed, 0 oh and 1. Cagle played through a shoulder injury all of last season that just kept getting progressively worse. She weighed having surgery in the offseason, decided to do it, and I think it was one of the best decisions of her college career, playing free and easy, and Madison finally enjoying the little parts of softball, like going to practice every day, suiting up for a game. She had some real issues with that last season. Well, I think it's hard as an athlete, too, when you are dealing with one of those nagging injuries and you're just going out there and trying to play through it. You make adjustments in your mechanics, whether it be pitching, whether it be hitting. So for her to just get back to what she loves is huge. 
One of those things is striking out opposing hitters. She gets a couple of them for the Cavaliers in the first. Starting nine for Clemson head coach John Rittman. Reedy Davenport, even though at the bottom of the order, was a real igniter in their game one win yesterday. Yeah, she had those two singles in game one. And I think really the sign of a team that's firing on all cylinders is when you're getting production one through nine in the order, especially in that nine spot, to have somebody down there with the experience that Reedy Davenport brings in there to flip the lineup over to the top is huge for the Clemson Tigers. And it's going to be big, too, going up against somebody like Molly Groob. We mentioned the pitching for Clemson, but the pitching for Virginia has been phenomenal throughout this weekend. She's somebody that likes to work the corner. She's got really good bite on that curveball that she throws outside to the righty. She'll bring it inside to the lefties as well. And every once in a while, mixing in that off-speed pitch was what made her successful in yesterday's ballgame. Mackenzie Clark, all ACC the last two seasons, had her five-game hit streak snap yesterday. Last eight games, though, two doubles, three homers, 11 runs driven in. As good a leadoff as you are going to find in the entire country. And it has been really tough for these Tiger hitters, just like the Cavaliers. I mean, Clemson, not much better. Six for 41 this series against Groob and Bigham. 146 is what that average translates to. Also, of course, throw in Savannah Henley, who threw the final three and a third, just giving up one run to Clemson in game one in that 4-1 win. It's not a good day to be a hitter this weekend, Alex. I tell you what, those pitchers out there have been great on both sides of the ball, just working the corners, mixing in the off-speed pitches. It's been hard to find solid barrel. Clark tags it out to right field. Weaver camps underneath it for out number one. Virginia goes Air Van Ash and Weaver in the outfield from left to right. Coon and Baylog are on the corners. Baylog getting the start at first. Hilton and Goldberg up the middle. Boggs making up the battery with Groob in the circle. Groob will deal to Maddie Moore, who in this series is one for four with a run and a couple of walks. Holding down this outstanding Clemson offense to just five runs so far. Clemson overall second in the nation with a 361 batting average coming into this game. John Rittman, now in his fourth season here, has been the coach for every single year of Clemson softball and how quickly they have stormed onto the scene and become a national power. Said that this lineup is so balanced, there are absolutely no holes. And Madison, if they're going to make some noise, if they've ever done it in their program history it is definitely going to be this season a contender to make it to the women's college world series in oklahoma city well there's no doubt when you look up and down this lineup that they really feel like a complete team they have some power in their order they have a lot of speed too so they like to put pressure on the defenses but to me it's that pitching staff holding them in every single ball game when you have pitchers like millie thompson like valerie cagle those are the types of arms that you want out there in the pressure situations I wonder how higher it was as well, getting John Rittman, of course, previously the head coach at Stanford for 18 seasons, made it to a couple of Women's College World Series as well with the Cardinals, 16 straight regional appearances, has international experience coaching the U.S. in both the 2004 and 2008 Olympics. Can't learn from someone much better, and that's ripped in the hole into left field for Maddie Moore. One out and one on for the Tigers. A really good at bat by Maddie Moore here. She gets a changeup, a two strike changeup, a bit higher up in the zone, but I love how she's perfectly on time for that pitch, smacking it through the 5 6 hole. Those are the types of adjustments that you want to see if you're a Clemson Tiger going through the top of the order, trying to see if they can get something going against Molly Groove in the circle. Here's Cagle, the ACC leader in average hits and doubles this season with more on first base for Clemson. The numbers certainly speak for themselves. Eight home runs has already driven in 26 this year. 
her slugging is almost a thousand. Anything over 500 is is pretty much incredible. That is well, just the type of season that she's had this year. <laughs> when you see somebody with 43 hits already on the season, especially on the left side, you think, oh, are they a slapper? Are they putting the ball in play? But no, Valerie Cagle, a power hitter already with eight home runs on the year, showing elite pitch selection up at the plate so far, but being able to capitalize whenever, whenever something is left in the zone that she can handle. 2-0 from Groove is looked at for strike one called on the outside corner. Kegel, though, this series, nothing for five. She has driven in a run and scored a run, but also struck out twice. Moore's only been caught once on first base trying to steal this year. She's on the move, throw down to second, and offline by Boggs. Seventh stolen base of the season for Moore. Stealing bases is all about getting a good jump off of first base. You want to leave as soon as that pitcher releases the ball. I like how she dives in head first here, and you can see Katie Goldberg having to come all the way onto the second side, second base side of second base to be able to catch that ball. No way she was going to tag Maddie Moore on that one. A three and one to Cagle. And the count runs full. First time with a runner in scoring position here for Clemson. And ready for the payoff to the two-time All-American as she looks at it outside. First and second, one away, and already Clemson has a rally going here in the quarter stadium. Molly Groove starting all of these at-bats so far in a 2 and one count, finding herself behind in these counts. And it's all about trying to establish the zone, not just for the hitters up at the plate, but also these pitchers trying to figure out what sort of pitches they're going to get called early in the game. We talked about that great movement that she has on her curveball, not being called for a strike. So we're going to have to see her making an adjustment with that pitch, maybe starting it a little bit more on the plate and then breaking outside. This is the hitter I would really not want to face. Jacobson is extremely hot. The Duke transfer had a two-run double in game one that ignited the offense for Clemson. But when you look up and down the lineup, we're talking about double-digit RBIs all the way throughout, including both of their options behind the plate. Jacobson, of course, towards the top of that list as well after playing four seasons for the Blue Devils. She has so much experience that she has brought in here to John Rittman's squad. Playing in her 221st collegiate game today. You look at those RBIs, and that's what you want to see. You want to see the production up and down. We talked to a lot of coaches throughout the year, Alex, and a lot of them are talking about getting that piece of timely hitting. And the odds that you can get that piece of timely hitting increase substantially when you have more than one player doing it in your offense. So you want to have a bunch of those RBI numbers spread throughout your lineup. Jacobson hammers it, but just foul down the third base line. We saw Clemson yesterday in game one of that doubleheader take some massive cuts, but just barely missing a home run by feet at a time down the left field line. Do another 2-2 to Jacobson from Groove. That time it's into left field and down for a base hit in front of air. Matty Moore scores. Sorry, just at third base, just at third. So now the bases are loaded now for the Tigers. And Alia Logaleo to come. Alex, I think uh, Caroline Jacobson hit that one a little bit too hard. It got to Kelly Aaron out in left field so fast that her teammate didn't have time to score on that one. But a good adjustment on the rise ball up in the zone. You could see that her toes were a bit on the chalk line, maybe trying to take away that curveball outside. And she smacks it out to left field. And the Tigers really have a rally started here in the bottom of the first inning. And very different than what we saw from Molly Groove yesterday, only allowing that one unearned run on two hits. 
The base is full. Moore on third. Cagle on second. Jacobson on first. The top of this order has gotten to group early on, and now it is up to Aliyah Logaleo to make Virginia pay. Looking for her first hit of this series, though. She is nothing for six with a couple of strikeouts. Logaleo rips it to left, and it gets underneath the glove of air. One run scores, second comes in as Cagle crosses the plate. Two nothing, Tigers in the first. As a batter, when you see the pitcher starting off this inning, falling behind in the count, you think her mindset has to be to try to get ahead. And I love this aggressive swing by Aaliyah Logaleo on the first pitch of the at-bat, drives it out to left field. And because Kelly Air decides to try to backhand that ball, it ends up getting past her and allows another Tiger run to come across the board. I think as a left fielder, you have to get in front of that ball to try to prevent that additional run from scoring. What a quick hook now here for Joanna Harden, the head coach of Virginia in her seventh season. Molly Grube is going to come out of this game, and we are already going to see a new pitcher come in here in Jenny Bressler, looking for some experience coming out of the bullpen. Bressler, the grad transfer from UNLV, who was a four-time All-Mountain West first-team pick. Madison, we have not seen her yet in this series and, and a bit of a different look very clearly. Harden is managing this game very closely. Well, we kind of figured coming into this game after the doubleheader yesterday that we were going to see a lot of different looks from Virginia if they needed it. Coach Harden says she has a ton of confidence in this pitching staff, and she knows that they are ready to go in at any moment. And you mentioned the experience that Jenny Bressler brings in through over 220 innings last season alone. She's a pitcher that likes to work all four quadrants, so she has a bunch of different pitches. She'll throw a drop ball. She'll throw a curve ball. She'll throw a screw ball. But it's that level of experience bringing in to a high pressure situation that they're going to need her to settle the thing, settle the everything down, try to get a ground ball out and get her team back into the dugout. Tuesday night, a highly anticipated matchup on the diamond. Number five, Florida State squaring off against 20, number 21, Florida State. That is number five, Florida, at Dick Hauser Stadium in Tallahassee. First at three meetings again this year in that Sunshine State showdown. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app. So Bressler will face Abby Vieira with runners on first and second. Clemson still threatening and leading 2 nothing thanks to the two-run single from Logaleo. They've officially changed the scoring, so it only goes down as a one-run single, and they are going to give Kelly Air an error in left field, kind of over-pursuing it on the backhand. It got behind her, and that allowed Cagle to score. So it just goes down as one run driven in for Logaleo there. And now two balls and no strikes on Vieira. Sometimes you don't get that much production behind the plate, but Vieira is definitely an outlier there. Eight for her last 16 home run, five runs driven in, and three multi-hit games in that span. Looking to increase the Clemson lead here, and the count even up at two and two. I really think that between Abby Vieira and Jojo Hyatt, they both help and push each other back behind the plate because each one of them is so good as far as receiving goes. They can give the other one a bit of rest. And from a coaching perspective, you can play matchups of who you want in the lineup depending upon whose swing better matches up for the pitcher that you're facing that day. 2-2 Two -two ground ball over to short, handled to second, on to first in time. Goldberg hilt into Baylog, and Virginia is out of a jam. Jenny Bressler inducing the twin killing. 
One way to get some momentum back on your side is a huge double play. A nice job by Katie Goldberg flipping this one over to Hilton and to Baylog for the 6-4-3 to end it. There were 2,000 in the seats here at McWhorter Stadium in the doubleheader yesterday. No reason to think it's going to be any less. This is the epicenter of college softball in the South right now. It is one of the toughest tickets in town. And Madison, it's really fun to see how the Clemson community has embraced softball now only in its fourth season, which is kind of hard to believe at this point. Line drive out to right center field. That's going to split the gap off of the bat of Sarah Kuhn. Head to the wall. She's in there with a stand-up double. What an answer from Virginia to lead off the second. It's a great piece of hitting by Sarah Kuhn. We talk about the drop ball coming out of the hand of Valerie Cagle, and you have to make an adjustment with your barrel. You have to try to get underneath that pitch, and Sarah Kuhn does exactly that, goes with it, hits it into that right center gap, and you can see just how much this ball game means to this Virginia squad by the reaction of Sarah Kuhn after she got to second base. I think everyone knew on the Virginia side that it was going to be a tall task to come in here and win this series. Right now, the Tigers have won 26 straight in this building and 14 in a row overall. But they knew it'd be competitive. Right at Moore, and she'll dive to tag the bag. That erases the leadoff double from Kuhn. Two away and nobody on. There's that Tigers D shining bright. The defense for Clemson this weekend has been unreal. Maddie Moore getting a great jump on this, and she knows immediately after she catches that ball that she's going to be able to double up Sarah Kuhn on second base. We talk about the pitching staff, but you have to have defenders behind you to be able to make not just the routine plays, but the phenomenal plays just like we saw right there. Clemson and here, firing on all cylinders early this season. Madison, this is what Clemson does so well this season at the same time. I mean, fielding 984, to put that in perspective, 975 is excellent, and they are well above that. But in game one, Virginia in the top of the first threatens. They've got first and second and nobody out, and then a 5-3 double play that Clemson turns. And that changed the entire tenor of this series, in my opinion. I completely agree, and I do think that plays defensively bring such an energy and a momentum when you go back into the dugout. Taking a look at this changeup, we talk a lot about the off-speed rise by Valerie Cagle, but this one's more of a true changeup working down in the zone, just showing you how much she's mixing speeds. But this defense has just been on another level, and talking to Coach Rittman coming into this week, he said that defense was definitely a point of emphasis for them coming into this season. Defense was a bit of an Achilles heel for them the past couple of years, so that was something that they really wanted to shore up behind their elite pitching staff. And when you get down to May and you start in the postseason and the ACC tournament, regionals, Clemson found itself in the Super Regionals last year as well. It, it's those little plays, those one or two plays a game that can change the tide. And it seems this year like finally that piece is in place. Count runs full on Leah Boggs. Two outs and nobody on for Virginia. Out the opposite way. Chases foul. Ready for the eighth pitch of the at bat coming up to Boggs, who is one for six with a couple of strikeouts in this series. She has been behind the plate in all three games thus far. Gets into the 3 2, out towards left. Miklish in a few steps, and the Wisconsin transfer squeezes it for out number three. But some more terrific defense gets Clemson out of a jam in the second. Bottom of the second, Clemson looking to add on to its two run lead against Virginia. Well, for this number four team in the country, there are the stars we know about Cagle. Clark and obviously Millie Thompson, but Ariel Oda, one of those unsung heroes, according to John Rittman, and she ended their midweek game against Charlotte with this two-run home run, walk-off style in the run rule.
possible. And when you have so many good offensive players on your squad, you know it's going to be a battle for who's going to win that DP position. But Coach John Rittman said the way that Ariel Oda has been swinging the bat this year, she had some quality at bats to end last year that she's bringing into this season. She said that she has won that DP position in the lineup for them. And we got to see that power that she brings for coming from the left side in that game on Wednesday as well. I asked John Rittman after the game coming into this series, is it safe to say that Oda has won that DP spot? And he said, oh yeah, she's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's the little things too, just her being able to string together quality at bats. And that doesn't necessarily translate to hits or to home runs, but it's going up there, finding a good pitch to hit, executing a game plan. Those are the types of things that you want to see at bat after at bat from somebody like Ariel Oda. And she was just the finishing flourish to that Clemson fifth inning where they put up seven runs on Charlotte to get the run rule. And she looks at strike one. It escalated so quickly. It just shows you what the Tigers are capable of when they're at their best. Well, and they're really a team that can do a lot of things offensively. They don't just stand in there and try to hit the ball out of the park, but they try to lay down bunts. They like to play the short game. They want to put pressure on the defense, and I think that's why it felt like that game snuck up on everybody so quickly on Wednesday because of all of the aggression that they show up at the plate. Also, base running, too, is a big factor for Clemson. They do like to steal bases and put people in motion. Leadoff walk to Oda. She has not been caught in five attempts so far this season. And that will bring up the Wisconsin transfer, Allie Miklish. One of three in the starting lineup. We mentioned Caroline Jacobson coming over from Duke. Miklish and then Davenport, who is in the on-deck circle right now, coming over from Florida Gulf Coast. All of them renowned at their former schools. Miklish was second team all Big Ten last year, made 164 starts at Wisconsin in four seasons as Davenport tries to time up Jenny Bressler from the on-deck circle. Runner goes, 1-0 is taken, throw down is perfect from Leah Boggs. First time Oda's been caught all year. That stolen base played right into the defensive ship that Virginia had going. Looks like Ariel Oda would have been called out anyway. It looks like she was called for leaving early over at first base, but either way, she was thrown out on that solid throw by Leah Boggs back behind the plate. Up the middle, Virginia has a very bright future as well. Jade Hilton, who is one of the better recruits in recent memory, coming to the grounds in Charlottesville. She starts at second base, but is the shortstop of the future for this program once Katie Goldberg's career is done. It's a strength of them this year. And we've talked about the defense for Clemson this weekend, but Virginia has made some great plays defensively as well. We already saw that nice double play to end the rally in the first inning. Those are the types of plays that you're going to have to make behind this pitching staff going up against an offense like Clemson has. Well, back-to-back -back walks by Jenny Bressler to begin the second, and now that will bring up the nine-hitter Davenport. And so associate head coach and pitching coach Mike Roberts in his first season will talk things over. Our next women's lacrosse games right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Saturday afternoon, top 12 matchup between Notre Dame and number 10 Virginia at noon Eastern. Next Sunday, 15th ranked Duke and Pittsburgh. That's at noon Eastern, followed by number one North Carolina hosting Clemson. And Joanna Harden will join the infield meeting as well. Mike Roberts, the pitching coach, is previously the associate head coach and pitching coach at Louisiana for three seasons, where they won back-to-back -back Sun Belt championships. Brings a wealth of knowledge and experience at Washington, mentoring Taryn Alvello. But not just that, it's his demeanor and his presence. He's a fun, light-hearted guy, always looking for the positive, according to Joe Harden. And has been a welcome addition to this pitching staff. 
Coach Harden said he can really do a little bit of everything. He can go out there and teach you how to throw rise ball, but he can also fix your moped. So well-rounded, those are the types of personalities that you want on your coaching staff. Coach Harden could not say enough great things about what he's been for this program this year. I think it's something we can all aspire to. <laughs> Fixing the moped part is not quite my jam. <laughs> 0-2 oh, on Davenport. Mentioned coming over from Florida Gulf Coast, the former A-Sun Defensive Player of the Year at shortstop, but she has moved over to the hot corner this season with Clemson. Miklish on first as Bressler readies for another 0-2. Got her on the drop ball. So after back-to-back -back walks and the caught stealing by Oda, Davenport down for the second out. Well, and when you throw a wide variety of pitches, it makes it really hard for batters to have to decide which barrel angle they want to attack the pitch with. And I like them going with this drop ball here. You can see the last minute bite that that pitch had down in the zone and Reedy Davenport just swinging right on top of it. Back to the top of the order, Mackenzie Clark bluffs. So does Miklish at first as she scampers back in without a throw. Clemson has only scored twice, but they've had six base runners so far in this game. Clark tries the bunt. Picked up in foul ground by Boggs, one and one. We saw Mackenzie Clark lay down a bunt for a base hit in their midweek game against Charlotte on Wednesday. Again, from that leadoff position, she can do a bunch of different things. She has speed, she has power, hit a home run in that game as well. And she's one of those players that's always reading the defense to see what they're going to give her to determine what she's gonna do up at the plate, entering today with a over 400 batting average and a good eye up there too with those 19 walks. One two pitch got her on the rise ball drop ball to get Davenport and she goes up at the eyes of Mackenzie Clark. It's a great looking pitch out of the hand of Jenny Bressler riding it up and underneath the hands of Mackenzie Clark to strike her out. We've talked a lot about the elite defense for Clemson, and this is what they've done this weekend. This was a play after back-to-back -back walks. Reedy Davenport gets the 5-3, a double play, a huge shift in momentum. On the other side of the field, it's Maddie Moore diving into the four, three hole to get the out over there. And then Allie Miklish in the outfield, laying out to snag that ball. It's not just the infield, it's not just the outfield, but everybody together has been playing such solid defense for the Tigers this season. Clemson has not made an error so far in this series yet. And Gabby Balog will lead off for Virginia. Despite that leadoff double from Sarah Kuhn in the second, Valerie Cagle has still faced the minimum after some more defensive prowess shown by the second baseman Moore, who grabbed the line drive and then dove to tag second base before Kuhn could scamper back in. And so 7-8-9 to come for the Cavaliers in inning number three against Valerie Cagle. Laced out to left right at Miklish, and she hauls it in for out number one. One aspect of the defense to Alex is I think it gives the pitchers so much more confidence to just go out there and focus on their process because when you're a defense that starts making errors behind the pitcher, then maybe the pitcher tries to muscle up some of her pitches, tries a little bit too hard to get a strikeout rather than just fo focusing on that one pitch at hand. Lauren Van Ash tries the drag bunt. You cannot do it much better than that. And 
And when you're an offense that can't seem to get anything going off of KUO, I love the idea of laying down a bunt here. She sees that the corners are playing back very sneaky and how she brought that barrel around just into no man's land out there in front of home plate. Nobody was going to be able to make a play on that bunt. Tying run comes to the plate as air rolls under it, but with the runner on the move, they just get the out at first base. Smart play here by Maddie Moore. She saw that runner running in front of her, but she knew because she was already moving to her left that her only play was going to be to get that out over at first base. Second out of the third as the lineup turns back over to Jade Hilton. Hilton, who has struggled as of late, hitting just about 100 over her last seven games. But she is the team's home run and RBI leader. And remember, she is only a freshman, a very bright future ahead for the freshman out of Martinsville, Virginia. One and one the count on Cagle. The top 60 recruit in the country steps back in and take strike two. And Coach Harden just said she's so athletic with what she brings to the field every single day. She put up those seven home runs early, so she's a freshman in this league that has a big target on her back for what type of hitter that she can be up at the plate. Tying run at the plate, runner in scoring position is Lauren Van Ash. We'll see another 2-2. Two -two. So far, Virginia has only managed two hits against Clemson in this game so far. And in the series as a whole, just seven against that combination of Cagle and Millie Thompson. Each were just so good, it's hard to pick a superlative with Thompson throwing a complete game, giving up just one run on two hits, and Cagle throwing a complete game shutout, giving up just three hits. And they really throw completely different too. So for an opposing offense, you're having to completely change your game plan going up against somebody like Millie Thompson, who likes to work a lot of those lefty change-ups, lefty drop balls down in the dirt versus facing Cagle, who's just bringing the heat with that drop ball. Hilton is certainly putting up a fight against Cagle who comes into this game with just a .53 ERA. There is no one on this Clemson staff out of the five pitchers that has an ERA above one. That's in the hole right side and through. Van Ash getting the wave around third and now she is held up and in a pickle in between home and third. Tag applied by the catcher Vieira and Clemson is out of the third. Scoreless in the top half. Still 2-0 Clemson. We'll talk to Joanna Harden when we return. Joined by Virginia head coach Joanna Harden. And you're managing this game really closely. Molly Groove comes in, gives up those couple of runs in the first. You turn to the veteran Jenny Bressler. How do you think she has thrown and responded to this situation? Yeah, she's come in in a couple tight situations throughout the season. And she's pretty calm, pretty poised. I think her experience and her age really lends that to her. So she did a great job, settled in. We rolled a double play. It's exactly what we we're looking for. And so she came in and had to put up another zero on the board. We need to do the same thing. And coach, facing Valerie Cagle back-to-back -back days, what are you yep. liking out of some of the swings that you guys have been able to put on her in today's ball game? Yeah, we felt like yesterday um, in game and after watching film, we kind of got, got caught between speeds. And so we really wanted to be clear at the plate and att attacking the zone, attacking the pitch that we're looking for and being really disciplined to lay off what we're not until we get two strikes and then we just fight like heck. So I, th I love the approach. I think we're better earlier and it's going to be a dogfight all the way through so really proud of it got one hung out right there so i got to be a little bit better and uh was a lot of game left so we're excited about it coach thank you appreciate Thanks. the time appreciate you guys all right so we go to the bottom of the third and uh, because of that 
tag applied in the pickle by the catcher Vieira. It ends up just still being a 2 nothing lead for Clemson. And Tigers will come up with 2-3 and 4 here in the third against Jenny Bressler, who has really shined in this role. She did walk off or walk the first two hitters back in the second, but then got a couple of strikeouts and a caught stealing. So no harm done in Bressler's first full inning of work. And she will return to the circle to face Maddie Moore. I think it's telling, Madison, the way that Virginia has battled Clemson, the number four team in the country, certainly one of the favorites to reach Oklahoma City, as well as win an ACC regular season, and who knows, maybe even tournament championship when it's all said and done. These have been two, now three, extremely competitive games. And this is a team that has never been to a regional before 2010. It's their only one ever, and Joanna Harden told us the expectation this year is to get to the postseason. It will be a failure if we don't do that. Jammed more into shallow left field. The call and the catch going out. Shortstop Goldberg went away. I think Virginia is one of those teams in the ACC that just continues to get better and better every single year. And you look at this pitching staff and what they've been able to do against such a hot offense in Clemson. And I've been really impressed with the way that they've been able to spin the ball. We talked about Molly Groob starting this game, the game that she threw yesterday with the curveball working its way away to those right-handed batters. She was electric out there and can't forget about Eden Bingham that threw in game one. So there are a lot of young players that have really stepped up for Virginia this season that showed them a lot of promise moving throughout the rest of their career. Bigham, just a freshman who is going to continue to get even better. Has a really nasty rise ball that maybe we'll see a little bit later on in this game. It certainly could end up being a committee in the circle type game. But when you face Valerie Cagle, if you don't pound her in, she's probably going to hurt you. <laughs> well, now she can spray it to all fields, but I think it's interesting as an opponent, they seem to want to throw her away. She's a power hitter, maybe trying to see if they can get her to swing at something out of the zone outside. But she has such good power going to left field. All of her home runs this season have come over in center field and in left field. She does a great job of using her lower body in her swing, and that's how she's able to get the extension on those outside pitches. One and two on the two-time All-ACC member. And a swing and a miss. Got her on the outside part of the play, Madison. Exactly what you were talking about. And you can see on that swing, too, how indecisive Valerie Cagle is on this pitch. And it's because she's throwing both a drop ball and a rise ball on the outside corner. Right at the last minute, this pitch is moving down in the zone. And as a batter, you have to adjust your barrel angle as that pitch is already on its way to you. That's what makes having that, that tunneling of your pitches so difficult when they come out of your hand looking the same and then right at the last minute move in a different direction. You really do not see that type of swing from Keiko often. Just that's where you chasing gotta just it tip down your cap to the pitcher. Yep. Yeah, that's what just shows you how much movement she has on that pitch. And again, coming in the same speed too, right in the low 60s. She's not going to blow you away with the velocity of that rise ball there at 62 miles per hour. But because of her ability coming out of her hand to look the same when she's throwing both a drop ball and a rise ball is what has kept the Clemson batters on their toes this ball game. Three strikeouts so far for Jenny Bressler. Rolled over to short as Goldberg gobbles it up and tosses across in plenty of time to get Caroline Jacobson. We'll talk with Clemson head coach John Rittman when we come back. His Tigers lead in the Hoos, two zip. Clemson head coach John Rittman joins us and right now looking for a sweep against Virginia, but the offense not necessarily broken out. The pitching has been spectacular against Jenny Bressler. How do you get some better swings and maybe try to break this game open a bit? Well, I think a lot of credit goes to their pitching staff. They've kept us off balance now for two days. And, um, you know, I think we're a little impatient at times at the plate. We get in good hitters counts and then start chasing some pitches. But uh, I think we've got to start looking to hit early in the count, but it's tough when they're, they're behind. Um, so really just got to stick to what we're doing, trust the process, and, and know that any part of our lineup can explode at any time.
And coach, the past couple of seasons, when we talk about the Clemson Tigers, we think about their pitching staff. But one thing that we don't talk about enough is the way that you guys have been able to play defense this year. How big is it to have those types of defensive players on your squad? Hey, it's it's awesome to have this type of defense behind our good pitching staff, you know, and, and certainly we've made some plays today. But, uh, you know, we filled a few holes last year in the recruiting process and and uh, really love the way we're playing defense, love the way we're pitching and and uh, but really, um, it's, it's been impressive all year the way our defense has played. Coach, thank you. We'll let you get back with your team. Thanks. Appreciate it. And a 2-0 lead for John Rittman's Tigers as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. Valerie Kegel getting ready to settle back in. Alex Perlman, Madison Shipman with you here at McWhorter Stadium. Crowd we expect to be just around 2,000. Absolutely packed as usual for a home ACC series against Virginia that have been two pitchers duels so far in the third game is looking more and more like that's what's developing. Two, three, and four for the Cavaliers. Gilbert, Weaver, and Kuhn to come up after it seemed like Virginia really started to get to Kegel a bit in that third inning. Squirts foul opposite way, nothing in two. They've made really good adjustments on the drop ball, getting their barrel underneath. And somebody like Tori Gilbert has been put into the lineup this weekend purely because of her ability to get her barrel underneath the drop ball. She has had great swings on pitches low in the zone all weekend long. Another good hack on that 71 mile an hour drop ball, a bit up in the zone. So I'm not surprised that we're seeing Valerie Cagle throughout this at bat working her off speed pitches, both the off speed rise ball and that true changeup that she's bringing in there. Another row two to Gilbert. High pop on the left side in foul ground and Davenport able to bring it in. Maybe that one a little bit more adventurous than she was hoping for, but stumbling back, she makes the catch. Sometimes those high fly balls, you just got to do whatever you can to keep your feet underneath it. She was able to snag that one. One out for the number three hitter, Abby Weaver, a strikeout so far. And one for seven in this series. Neither team much to write home about offensively. Clemson coming into the game had only scored five runs in this series so far, so had the two more to make it seven. And Virginia has just one at this point. But I would imagine we're gonna see that for Clemson throughout ACC play. It's not really going to matter too much who is the opposing team. Certainly can't wait to see some marquee matchups coming up in a few weeks with Florida State April 6th through 8th that uh, Clemson will play at Virginia Tech in the final series of the year. That very well could have ACC regular season championship implications if everything goes right for both teams. So far, so good. Virginia Tech, 7-1 and one coming into this game, and they swept their series against Georgia Tech, so make it 8-1 and one on the year. Clemson trying to move to 6-0, and oh, perfect in the ACC thus far. And the 0-2 is called strike three on the outside corner. Kegel goes with the 72 mile an hour drop after throwing back to back off speed pitches. Comes in with the heat to get the strikeout looking. Third of the game for Kegel. She had five in that complete game shutout yesterday, game two of the doubleheader. And Sarah Kuhn, who has the only extra base hit for Virginia in this game. And also for the entire game, both teams doubled into right center field, but then was caught snoozing off of second base. Really not much she could have done, but it goes down as a 4-3 line out into a double play for Katie Goldberg, who is on deck. And that, unfortunately for the Cavaliers, erased what looked like a very promising beginning to that second inning. So much movement and so much velocity. All those drop balls coming in over 70 miles an hour. It's a tough, tough task for Sarah Kuhn and the Cavaliers against one of the nation's premier arms. 
and goes with the off speed. I mean, that is just unfair. We're talking a 13 mile an hour difference here, Madison. Straight filth coming out of the hand of Valerie Cagle when she pulls the string on this one for her fourth strikeout on the day. The top of the ACC standings very much starting to take place now. Clemson, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and certainly throw Duke in there as well. Can't wait for the Knolls and the Blue Devils coming up March 24th, 6 Eastern, right here on ACC Network, continuing on the road to Oklahoma City as we work towards May to the start of the postseason and then to June to the beginning of the Women's College World Series. It's going to be here before you know it. It seems like a long way away. It is not. Trust me on that one. A little bit outside to start off for the Tigers to Logaleo, then Vieira and Oda. That's 5-6-7 against Jenny Bressler. Now back out for her third full inning of work for the Hoops. Really impressive the way that she's been mixing up speeds and locations coming in. A really tough spot as well with first and second and just one out. And she got a 6-4-3 double play from Abby Vieira to end that jam in the first inning. Waited back on the off speed and Logaleo deposits it into center field. going after this changeup on a 1-1 count. You can see how far up on the chalk line Aaliyah Logaleo was in the box, waited on that pitch, kept her hands back, and drove it straight back up the middle. Logaleo now two for two. Had an RBI back in the first. The other run came in on an error by the left fielder, Ayer. Vieira puts one down to third, handled by Kuhn with a throw across. Good sacrifice there, though. And that moves Logaleo into scoring position. And even with the two-run lead, Clemson knows that they need to pile on some insurance runs here. And has Abby Vieira lay down a textbook, a sacrifice bunt, right out in front of home plate. Sarah Kuhn having to come across to make a play on that one, but now a runner into scoring position for Ariel Oda. Goes down as 5-4, third base to second base, covering Ariel Oda with Logaleo on second base, takes high. Oda walked her first time up, and she was caught stealing. Logaleo with great speed on second base and a chance for Clemson to already add to their 2-0 lead. It's very much been a defense pitching dominated series not much in terms of extra base hits and we still have not seen a home run yet in these three games between Virginia and Clemson but nobody's surprised at the same time because these are the top two ERAs in the ACC coming in you knew it would be tough sledding for the hitters well, you know that these teams are looking at whatever they can, scouting reports to make sure that their defense is in the best possible position. You could take a look at Lauren Van Ash over there in center field, moved all the way over towards left field, maybe anticipating that Jenny Bressler is going to want to throw the ball outside to Ariel Oda, try to induce a fly ball over to the left side of the field. Seen a lot of defensive shifts from teams this year, trying to utilize whatever information they have to their advantage and seeing Bressler so far in this at bat try to work outside. Three and one to Oda. And that's ball four. Our next softball game right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app. It's on Friday where number six Florida State Heads to Durham, taking on number 16, Duke. First game of a three-game weekend series with our coverage beginning at 6 Eastern from Duke Softball Stadium. Two teams near the top of the ACC standings. Florida State swept Syracuse today in their opening ACC series, so they move to 3-0. 
Clemson with a win would be 6-0. They would be atop the standing still. Virginia Tech swept as well this weekend. They took down Georgia Tech in that three-game set, so they're 8-1. and one. They've played three ACC series, and so is Duke. That rivalry weekend between them and North Carolina, a sweep for the Blue Devils. You get the feeling it's going to be a tight race for the top spot in the ACC with as good as the, these teams are in this league. We're already seeing a couple of good ones here in Clemson and Virginia going at it this weekend. But Florida State, Duke, that one's going to be a good matchup. A couple of great hitters on both sides of the ball. I think of Michaela Edenfield for Florida State, Kaylee Harding, but Anna Gold having herself a weekend for Duke. Three more home runs today. They hit six total. Anna Gold had two homers and three runs driven in in game two of that series against North Carolina. You mentioned Florida State. Catherine Sandercock with her first career no-hitter on Friday against Syracuse. Went up in the zone, challenged, and now two and two on Miklish. Swung right through it. When Jenny Bressler has needed the big out, she has been able to get it for Virginia. And she's not blowing you away with her velocity, 61 miles per hour, but she relies on her spin and her location. Back-to-back -back rise balls, she got Allie Miklish to swing at out of the zone, and that's a huge a second out in this inning. Two out and two on for Reedy Davenport as Clemson looks to add to its two-run lead. And now down in the count, nothing and one. Davenport two for five this series after striking out her first time up against Bressler, who has four Ks so far. And she has now been through this entire order for Clemson. One thing we are learning, even if Virginia doesn't come back and win this game against Clemson, is that the Cavaliers are going to be a handful in the ACC. So many different arms, so many of them with great command in the circle, too. They love to nitpick at those corners. You saw the pitch before that one. Jenny Bressler working that drop ball outside. That's a difficult pitch for right-handed batters to handle and get good barrel on gotten herself ahead in these counts. And when you're ahead 0-2, 1-2, you have the ability to work that rise ball up and out of the zone. And that's when you're going to see those big swings and misses. Bressler looking for her fifth strikeout. Just left it a little bit too far outside in the river and no chase from Davenport. Mackenzie like Clark waiting on deck here for Clemson, though. Like that location, even on the take, you could tell that Reedy Davenport was thinking about swinging at that drop ball outside. One, two. Tag foul. That berm has really become a popular spot here in McWhorter Stadium. Perfect place to take in a high level ACC ball game like this one. As Virginia looks to fend off the sweep, need one more big strike against Davenport. Not that time, two and two. A little bit chilly, though, with the temperature in the low 50s. See some blankets out for good reason. We'll do another one. What an at-bat here for Davenport. Eighth pitch coming up. She's seen a little bit of everything in this at-bat. Drop balls inside and outside. Rise balls, off-speed pitches. Really making Bressler work out there in the circle. Fought off again. 
And Madison, every single pitch that Davenport sees here out of the right hand of Bressler starts to compute even more information. Coaching staff certainly knows how important this at bat could be. Another 2-2 two -two and another foul ball. Clemson proving its lineup depth. This has been an all-time battle between Davenport on the left and Bressler on the right. Another 2-2, two -two, and the count runs full. About to see the 11th pitch of the A-B. It's a great couple of takes there, taking those ones out of the zone and fouling off the ones that are close. And each and every pitch, it seems like the momentum is going more and more towards Reedy Davenport in the box. And I think Leah Boggs can feel that momentum, and that's why she's taking a second here to call time and come out and have a chat with the veteran pitcher. Where's the pressure here, Madison? I, I, maybe it's my hitter mentality, but I always think that the pressure is on the pitcher, especially in a 3-2 <laughs> count. They have to throw me something good. And I always yep. felt more and more confident the more foul balls I was hitting in that bat too, especially if I got a couple of them solid. And it just seems like Davenport is really trying to, really starting to figure out some stuff up there in the box. Pitch number 11. Ground ball is short. Goldberg tosses across in time. Battle won by Bressler. And Clemson able to strand a couple. Still 2-0 on top. We talk a lot about what makes Valerie Cagle so good in the circle, and it's the elite drop ball. Look at the movement that she has on this pitch right at the last minute, dropping off the table. I love this side view of it here. When it's coming in about halfway to the plate, it's still at the knees, and just as you go to get your swing off is when it drops it down in the zone. That pitch is such a difference maker, and it is interesting when you look only two ground balls on the day-to-day, -day, and I think that's because she has had to work in her off-speed rise ball and her changeup going up against Virginia in this ball game. Well, went off speed to start off the at-bat to Katie Goldberg. It's Goldberg, Boggs, and Baylog. Five, six, seven in the lineup for the Cavaliers. Trying to get back in this game. They have not led in this series yet and have only pushed across one run so far. Goldberg hit it harder last time up and ended up lining into a four unassisted double play with Sarah Kuhn a little bit too far off of second base. Matty Moore tagged the bag and that was that. Gets into this one to deep right center field. Clark on the run! Gets it before she bangs into the wall. One away here in the fifth. Some really good adjustments on these swings from the Cavaliers, but even better defense. Look at the way that Mackenzie Clark tracks this one all the way to the wall, catches that one with ease. And having the home field advantage, knowing exactly how many steps until you get to that fence in the outfield is something that veteran outfielders like Mackenzie Clark can use to make incredible catches like that. Leah Boggs is swing and a foul back. Mallory Cagle now throwing a first pitch strike to seven of the last eight batters for Virginia. Boggs a fly out to left her first time up. What a comforting thought if you're Valerie Cagle in the circle that you have someone like Mackenzie Clark out in center field. You have Logaleo and Moore up the middle. You're throwing to Vieira. That defense has just been so good game in and game out. And, and it's reliable at this point that they are going to make those spectacular plays behind you. Well, and you can appreciate that this defense is ready at any given moment. We talk about how great the pitching staff is at shutting down other offenses, but Virginia today has made adjustments on that 72-mile-an-hour drop ball, so when they hit it, they're hitting it hard. Another fly ball to right center testing Clark, and she squeezes it for out number two. 
Tonight, all ACC, as you covered with highlights and complete breakdowns from all the NCAA tournament games that ACC teams are playing in. Our coverage begins after the men's and women's second round games right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app. On the men's side, Pitt's tournament came to an end. A couple of games going on right now between ACC teams on the women's side. Notre Dame in the fourth quarter in a good one with Mississippi State only up by three. And then Virginia Tech and South Dakota State just basically got underway. Virginia Tech a one seed this season. They've had a great year. So is Notre Dame, though. I don't know about you, Alex, but I was feeling pretty good about my bracket the first couple of days. But now, if you want a live look in at my bracket, it's just a bunch of flames. It is all over the place. I was feeling really bad about my bracket since day one. That play very close over at first, <laughs> but Gabby Balog able to beat it out. When you lose your national champion on day one in Arizona, uh, it's probably going to be a, a rough go for you. <laughs> a tough break, but a good swing by Gabby Baylog here again, just making adjustments, getting their barrel underneath this pitch. Not trying to do too much, much with it, especially on the ones that are outside to those right-handed batters. They really seem to be zoning in on that location. Van Ash rips it, but snagged by Davenport. You're running out of superlatives about this Clemson defense. Davenport playing halfway up the line. Look at those quick reactions, snagging that one out of the air. Bottom five in Clemson with the Tigers leading Virginia 2-0. Clemson looking for a sweep here this weekend against Virginia. And interestingly enough, if that happens, Madison, every ACC series this weekend would have been sweeps with Duke, Virginia Tech, NC State, Florida State, and Louisville all winning today. That is interesting. You don't see that too often no. in conference play. Sweeps are very hard to come by because these teams are so good at making adjustments on day three. We even saw that last weekend from Virginia after losing the first two to Georgia Tech, came back and won game three. This ACC conference this year is just so strong when it comes to softball. All of these teams seem to be elevating their game each and every year. Top of the order for the Tigers looking to tack onto that two zip lead. It's a good part of the order to do it. Clark, Moore, Cagle, and then if anybody can reach, Caroline Jacobson. Something you also don't say very often is that Mackenzie Clark still looking for her first hit in this series. 0 for 7. She's still been productive in her at-bats, though, whether it be moving runners over, even scoring a run. Maybe not getting the hits that she wants, but she's still somebody that sets the tone from the top of the order. Especially from an opposing defense side, you're always having to look for that sneaky bunt that she likes to bust out in any count. Two and two as Clark holds up. Fly out to right and a strikeout swinging so far. That strikeout was against Bressler back in the second inning. She came in. In the first, with just one out recorded by Virginia. And she'll look at strike three. Fifth K of the game for Jenny Bressler. Gets these batters anticipating that she's going to come back with the rise ball up and in, and then goes with the drop ball low and away. I love her effectiveness on every single one of her pitches that she's throwing today. She's gotten strikeouts on the rise. She's gotten a lot of strikeouts on that drop ball, really keeping these batters guessing throughout the entire at bat. Very rarely does she go to the same spot back to back pitches. And I think we've seen that throughout the season when Clemson isn't able to put up a lot of runs like they have been throughout the year, but and the off chance that the other team is able to hold them down, they go all over the zone, all different speeds. Maddie Moore flies it out to left. Air waits for it to come out of the air for out number two. Tuesday night, good rivalry game for you. Number five, Florida squaring off against 21st ranked Florida State in the first of three meetings again in the Sunshine State Showdown. Our coverage begins 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app.
And that's something Bressler has been able to do, Madison. She's been shifty. She's been throwing it all over the zone. And she's been throwing everything for a strike so far. When you throw a bunch of different pitches as a hitter, it makes it harder to go up there and just sit one specific pitch. If you're going up against a pitcher that maybe throws 50% change-ups, 50% rise balls, you can pretty much guarantee if you pick one of those to sit on, you're going to see it at least once throughout the at-bat. But when you're facing an opposing pitcher like a Jenny Bressler, or even what we saw out of Eden Bigham in game one where they're throwing rise balls, drop balls, curve balls, change-ups, it makes it a lot more difficult to just sit one pitch so then you're looking at sitting a speed or a location and that is one area where I feel like Clemson throughout this season maybe hasn't hit the ball as well as they would like to and Cagle chases it low and away a couple of strikeouts and one two three go the Tigers here in the fifth Jenny Bressler dealing for Virginia Valerie Cagle today has shown us a wide variety in the pitches that she's thrown and the locations. There's a drop up, a drop down, a drop out, and then how about pulling the string on the changeup? Mixing speeds when you're able to pump pitches in there at 72 miles per hour makes it even more difficult to hit against. And you just look at the whip that she's been able to put together this season. It is absolutely unbelievable. Walks, hits per innings pitch. She is just above 0.7. Look at the MLB leader in Jacob DeGrom now with the Texas Rangers, just below one. Absolute I'd dominance. That, I'd imagine that DeGrom's slider and Valerie Cagle's drop ball probably move about the same amount of inches on their way to the plate. <laughs> Both very good moving pitches. I would imagine opposing hitters would say the exact same thing about both of them. <laughs> I do I not want to face. <laughs> Bring the heat and movement. Quickly 0-2 oh, on Kelly Ayer. She's a leading hitter for the Cavaliers, but dropped from seventh to ninth in the lineup. As the Hoos have just six outs to work with as they try to fend off a sweep at McWhorter Stadium. Revved it up all the way to 72 there. Missed the uh, location she was looking for, though. Now one and two. Air grounded out to first, or rather uh, second base, that is, in the third. And another one, two. Right back into the glove of Vieira. And there is the 100th strikeout of the season for Valerie Cagle. I love here with this pitch. She actually goes with that off-speed rise ball coming in about 62 miles an hour, moving away from the lefty air. Just a really good pitch. Again, adding to that repertoire of pitches that Cagle is able to throw. And she's thrown that off-speed a lot more in this ball game, knowing that the Cavaliers have made adjustments to the drop ball. And I think that's a pitch that's going to make her even more difficult to hit off of as we go down the stretch of this season. Has been so economical as well, now just throwing 62 pitches. In her three-hit complete game shutout yesterday, she only had to toss 78. Top of the order for Virginia. This is where it's going to happen if it is for the Cavaliers. Hilton, Gilbert, and Weaver do. And the 2-0 punched out down the right field line, and we'll get into the bullpen. We knew coming into this series that Virginia was going to be very aggressive on those hitters counts, those 2-0 counts, even those 3-0 counts. Coach Joanna Harden said she wanted to give them the green light because they needed to match Clemson's aggressiveness with aggressiveness up at the plate. Pass Davenport, handled by Logaleo, but no play. Second hit of the game for Hilton. Good example there of that aggressiveness paying off. A drop ball inside might have been called a ball, but because Jade Hilton got her swing off, she was able to get her barrel out in front of her and poke that one deep enough into the 5-6 hole for a base hit. Tori Gilbert is the tying run at the plate for Virginia. Gilbert has had some really good swings on Cagle, though that one a little bit late. So far, a strikeout and a pop-up in foul ground. She is been battling though great against the drop ball and of course that's the calling card of Valerie Cagle 
Yeah, very quickly, her, her barrel gets behind her hands, and that's a key when trying to hit a drop ball. You don't want that barrel to get out in front and roll over on that pitch, but you want your hands to lead that swing and have your barrel back behind you because ultimately that barrel needs to stay in the zone for as long as possible. And one of the first moves in Tori Gilbert's swing is that barrel getting on plane. So that's why she's been able to have success on pitches low in the zone throughout this season. That went far too low. Hilton has to dive back into first. The excellent defense for Clemson also works its way to the spot behind the plate in both Vieira and also Jojo Hyatt, who we saw in game two yesterday. 2-1 pitch, right back up the middle. Moore to short one. Logo Leo to first in time. How about a 4-6-3 to get Clemson out of the sixth? Every time Virginia starts to get momentum, Clemson's defense has other plans. Another double play to end the inning. Jenny Bressler has been fantastic coming into this ball game in relief, mixing speeds, mixing locations, working the drop ball on both sides of the plate, but also the rise ball up in the zone, tailing away from those lefty batters. She has really kept these Clemson batters guessing all game long, and that's what has kept the Cavaliers in this ball game. And in this series in general, I mean, Bigham and Henley yesterday in game one, giving up just those four runs, Usually that's good enough to keep you in the game against Clemson. Unfortunately, only scored once. And then Molly Grube gave up one run unearned in six innings yesterday. It's been a little bit of everything for Virginia. They just have not been able to get the offense going. But defense hasn't been too much of an issue as well as the pitching. I mean, the pitching has been stellar and something that is going to give other ACC teams fits throughout the rest of this year. Caroline Jacobson pops it up on the infield. And Baylog squeezes it for out number one. Kaylin Jones coming into play left field. One out here in the sixth. The Leo Logaleo coming to the plate. First inning that with an RBI single and Drove it out to left field to get the scoring started for Clemson. That's what you have her in the middle of your order to do is to get things going and try to make an adjustment here off of Jenny Bressler. One thing we've seen from her too is her ability to get ahead in the count. And I think that's what has had Clemson on their heels a bit throughout this ball game is because Jenny Bressler has been able to pound the strike zone with both the rise ball and that drop ball early in the count. And Logaleo was 0 for 2 coming into this game, and now she's 3 for 3. Our next softball game right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Friday, it's number 6 Florida State taking on Duke. First game of the three-game weekend series coverage right here on ACC Network. 6 Eastern from Duke Softball Stadium. Two of the top four teams in the ACC. Can't wait to see what Duke is able to do against Florida State. Swept their series, their first series in ACC play this weekend as that's flown out to deep left center field and it splits the gap. Logaleo around third, getting the hold up there and it's second and third and one out after the double by Abby Vieira. I like the aggressiveness swinging first pitch of this at bat, knowing that wrestler has been getting ahead. Abby Vieira goes after this pitch a bit off of the plate, but she stays with it, drives it out into that left center gap. And we mentioned Kaylin Jones has just gotten put into this ball game. And of course, the ball finds her out in the outfield, but a really good relay to get that into the catcher in time to prevent Aliyah Ligaleo from scoring. And so a change coming for Clemson as well. Talking with the home plate umpire, Tim Cassati, as well as a new pitcher here for Virginia. We'll tell you more about the freshman Eden Bigham when we come back. Second and third for Clemson in the sixth. 
Jenny Bressler was excellent, striking out six, coming in in relief of Molly Group in the first inning, but running into trouble with one out. Runners on second and third here for Clemson, and uh, they are going to turn to Eden Bigham in the circle. Big spot for the freshman for Virginia. Yeah, I like this change here, too, because she's going to bring something completely different. She's going to bring the velocity up a bit. She's going to throw to mid to the upper 60s, and she works all four quadrants. She's got a curveball, a screwball, but her rise ball is her best pitch. It's got really good late break on it up in the zone. First batter is Ariel Loda that Bigham will face, and that's on the outside corner. Bigham ranked the number 28 recruit in the country coming out of high school. No hit Lamar in her first ever collegiate start. How about getting your Virginia career on track very early on? Joanna There's Harden no flying said under that, the radar uh, as a freshman when you come no, out and no hit your first opponent. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, Coach Harden said her first impression wasn't that, oh man, how do I match this? It's that I can handle this. I'm good enough. And now two and one. So the inning started with Jacobson popping up to first and then Logaleo singled and Abby Vieira doubled into left center. Second and third, one out for Oda. And it's three and one. Oda's five for 10 with runners in scoring position. Six runs driven in this year. And just outside the zone, base is juiced. Oda walking for the third time. Logaleo on third, Vieira pinch hit for Houston, a pinch run for Houston. So she is on second base and Oda on first. And now Allie Miklish will come up. So we have one pinch runner in already at second base. That's Houston for Vieira, who doubled into left center. And maybe we're seeing a pinch hitter here for John Ridman. Allie Miklish is the one who is due, but instead it's Kaya Keller who is going to come up with the bases loaded and one out and a chance for Clemson to in all likelihood, if they're able to get a big hit here, win this series. Not only win, but sweep. Coming in as a pinch hitter is one of the toughest roles in the game of softball because you have to be ready at any time when your name is called upon. And especially with the new pitcher in here in this ball game, don't have a ton of information from today, but you can look back to the at-bats yesterday to use to your advantage. Keller not shy, ripping that first pitch foul. I would imagine though, Madison, coming off the bench in this situation, you're like, you're dying to get in all game, and now you get a chance to come in and hit with the bases loaded, one out, and the pitcher kind of on the ropes. Yeah, I, I think that the pressure is all on the pitcher in the circle, and as a batter, you have to use that to your advantage in the box, knowing that she has to bring something into the strike zone. Just found the inside corner, now nothing and two. Count in favor of Bigham. <laughs> Keller is two for six this season as a pinch hitter. Down in the count, nothing and two. Keller, the junior from Alabama. Ground ball to second. Short one. First double play. We have seen the middle infield defense of both teams absolutely incredible so far. This time it goes Hilton to Goldberg. Finish it off with Baylog. Virginia's out of it. We talked so much about this Clemson defense coming into this ball game, but how about the defense they've shown us today against the Cavaliers making 
deep. Double plays look easy out there. This one, a throw coming in to the catcher. They actually get the runner in a rundown, just executing that one perfectly. And how about this? Four, six, three, a double play. Alex, I can't remember a game where we've seen as many double plays as we have in this ballgame today. We have seen four of them total between Virginia and Clemson. And a few of them in inning ending fashion too and taking away rallies. One of the biggest reasons that it's only two nothing as we head to the top of the seventh. Kegel back in the circle and the first pitch ground ball over to Logaleo to her left and in time to get Abby Weaver. One away in the seventh. Virginia down to its final two outs here in the afternoon. I think it's important to remember, too, that Alia Logaleo was recruited as an outfielder and transitioned over into the infield. And I love the instincts in her anticipating that that ball was going to be hit up the middle. It's all about that pre-pitch thought when you're a shortstop because you have to cover so much ground at that position. Chopper in the hole, right side through, no throw to first base. And the tying run comes to the plate for the Cavaliers in the seventh. Base hit, Sarah Kuhn. She has had some excellent at bats so far in this game. Double back in the second, absolutely ripped one into right center field and now two for three with that single. Katie B Goldberg, who lined into a double play back in the second inning, and her first at bat takes strike one. Kuhn on first base for Virginia, and that finds the outside corner for strike two from Cagle. Clemson trying to improve to 6-0 in the ACC. Win their 27th straight game at McWhorter Stadium. And also looking for their 15th straight overall win. in another low scoring game for the third straight here in this series. But 12 hits combined between the two. Six hits for both teams. They are just being scattered because of great defense and timely pitching from both Clemson and Virginia. I think Virginia has been able to put some really good swings off of Cagle today. A couple of them have been a bit snake bitten, hitting hard line drives to these defenders, but a really drastic adjustment from what we saw yesterday coming into today's ball game with the way that they're attacking that drop ball, forcing Valerie Cagle to have to go to some of her other pitches. One, two. Goldberg the tying run and the 2-2. Lofted to right and squeezed by Jacobson. Two away. You could see Goldberg just trying to do whatever she could to lift that ball out into the gap. Was able to get barrel underneath the drop ball, but just went right to Jacobson in right field. It's all down to Leah Boggs. Cavaliers have scored one run this series. They double it up right here. It would mean we would go to the bottom of the seventh. Cagle needs one more out to complete her second complete game shutout of this series. Ground ball to third, but picked up in foul ground and now one and one. How about the defense by Coach Joanna Harden down the third baseline, too? Still, still got it. <laughs> Showing them how it's done down there. Ball in the strike, the count on Boggs. Couple of fly outs, one to left and one to center against Cagle. And one for eight in this series. The last hope for the Cavaliers here in the seven at Clemson. High fly center field. Clark camps underneath it, and Clemson sweeps Virginia. 
two nothing the final in the finale. All around, just a fantastic series by both teams. We saw elite pitching. We saw some timely hitting. But to me, it was the defense that stood out. And the amount of double plays in this game was absolutely impressive in a huge series sweep for the Clemson Tigers. We are joined by shortstop Aliyah Logaleo for Clemson. Aliyah struggled a little bit at the beginning of this series, not today. Three for three, a real catalyst, especially defensively for this team. First of all, let's just talk about the defense. How good can this team be with what we've seen already from the leather? You know, we just are so passionate about making plays behind our pitchers, and you can see that. It's very evident. Um, we have such good chemistry, and it's it's such a, a fun thing to watch and a fun thing to be a part of. When it comes to, to making adjustments off of a team like Virginia that had such a good pitching staff, what was it that came down to getting the timely hits for you guys today? Really just trying to make the moment not too big. We've played this sport since we were eight years old, so trying to think of that like backyard game. We're playing wiffle ball, and we're just getting our job done. Aliyah, you've been able to beat teams a lot of different ways, now improving to 29-1, and one, still perfect 6-0 and oh in the ACC. You're able to go against Virginia and maybe not score like you're used to, but you play great defense. You have the pitching game in and game out. How complete is this team in your mind? Uh, we are so full, 100%, one through nine, and then our bench, everyone's ready coming off. And we see so many different pinch runners, so many different uh, pinch hitters, and that's huge in our game because we don't always have our offense, but we're always ready for our defense, and we've always got our pitchers' backs. Aliyah, congratulations on the sweep. Thank you so much. I'm excited to see where these Tigers are able to go coming down the stretch. Certainly one of the best teams in the ACC. They proved it this weekend. Well, I think they showed why they're one of the best pitching stabs in the country, too. Valerie Cagle able to come out and throw back-to-back -back days, changing her repertoire up a little bit. We saw a lot more off-speed pitches from her, not just relying on that hard drop ball. I think that's something that Clemson's definitely going to carry down the rest of the season. The Tigers scored just seven runs in this three-game sweep of Virginia, but more than enough to get this big series sweep in the ACC. Thank you so much for joining us with Madison Shipman and for our entire ACC Network crew. I'm Alex Perlman saying so long from Clemson, South Carolina. It's a sweep for the Tigers and a perfect 6-0 in ACC play.